Hey there, this is Nali J from High Latency, bringing you a Planet Zoo video. Today we're doing a time scenario from the recent DLC, uh, Wetlands. And this is the Greenleaf Zoological Zoo. And the scenario is puddles in the Pantanal. So this is the first time I attempted this scenario. I did have a bit of a sneak peek into the map before attempting. And this is a pretty bare bones scenario that you start with only one vendor in one of your information shops. So the objectives we're looking at for this one are four exhibit animals, nine habitat animals, 85% welfare, 1200 guests, 2.5 education rating, three out of five star zoo and $15,000 profit. So one of the first things I noticed about this zoo is they have this transformer here next to the entrance, which uh, most players will know you don't need uh, power next to the entrance because the entrance comes with power for free. So I just turned that off for now and went ahead and put in my exhibit animals or at least their enclosure and some staff to look after them. I wanted to get some high appeal exhibit animals in to try and get some people into the zoo to start off. And one important thing to note about this time scenario is that you do not really need to buy any habitat animals because they are all gifted to you <laughs> during the scenario. So here I've just put in a water treatment because there's a lot of water around. And now I've moved my transformer that was next to the entrance over to power it and also just to give me a little bit more powered area to work with. So the first animal that you receive is the Asian small clawed otter and I was getting it about four minutes in. So I'm not 100% sure on the timings, but th there they are. So with the otters, um, they can go into that habitat that's already pre-existing there and you only need two for them to be happy. So although you get a large number of otters, I decided to just stick with two to begin with. Just setting up for the uh, second animal, which is around the 10 minute mark, which is the cranes, uh, the red crowned crane. I just forgot to put the turn, to turn the power back on there. So that's me turning it on. And then the third animal is the black and white rough lemma. So there's a kind of half enclosure already built there, uh, half habitat, you're just gonna finish putting the uh, fence around. So here's me putting in the other exhibit animals and just linking up the fences. Well, I've noticed I haven't got a lot of guests in, so I guess they're not very interested in my exhibit animals. Well, fine then. <laughs> I think some of them are quite interesting, um, but we all know it's some of the habitat animals that will really draw in the crowds. So I noticed my uh, uh, crowds didn't really start to come in until the animals were in. With this one, I kind of shot myself in the foot a little bit by putting them all in quarantine. I don't always do the quarantine thing for time scenarios because it can take a long time and that my money got actually quite low, <laughs> which is not uh, something I usually have to deal with. So just be wary of that timing because it, uh, depending on whether the animals are injured or not, it can take a while to get them out of quarantine. I put this fence here just so that um, I could control where the viewing area was and put the donation buckets closer and also so that they weren't, um, it wasn't con causing congestion along that path. Um, so that's the uh, crane exhibit there with the uh, see-through fence. Now with this one, uh, you want to be building up your education as you go. That's why I'm taking the time to um, put in all those ed ha habitat education boards and speakers. Uh, because one of the objectives is education. Well, it's not that high, it's only 2.5, but uh, it's one of those things that takes time to build up, I've found. So I'm just sort of trying to do it as I go. 
Now, because I've got this space here near the entrance, um, I decided to put another water treatment over here and then just put some staff paths down so that the crowds wouldn't get too close to it. <clears throat> that uh, orange board, uh, I thought it wouldn't be too a little bit too far, but uh, I just left it there for now and I think I move it a little bit later on. Um, so just be cautious if you're going to use this one for the lemurs, there's some rocks and things around the um, border that they can escape from. Uh, so I just deleted them or moved the trees or what have you so that they wouldn't be able to escape. You also want to be uh, putting in things like bins and um, chairs and food and drink and that sort of thing just to improve the overall rating of your zoo gradually over time. So the spectacle caiman is the next animal that you get gifted so I'm just trying to put all the habitats close to each other so I don't have to expand out too much. I swear I have the hardest time with these paths uh, sometimes I get it right and other times I just struggle I feel like everyone makes it look so easy and I'm planning to put uh, my other two habitats over here for the later animals uh, which I'll get to shortly um, and then uh, in order to manage the work zones and staff rooms a bit better um, I've decided to build this little staff area out the back. Usually when I'm putting in work zones and um, adding staff, I usually have one keeper per two habitats. Uh, I know that some people do one keeper per habitat, but I've found that if the habitats aren't too big and there aren't too many animals, uh, that's usually sufficient. If you're having an Africa style habitat where you've got, you know, 1500 animals, then you might want to have more than one keeper <laughs> or, or half a keeper really. Uh, so here's where my Galapagos giant tortoise is going to go in. Um, and again, that's one where you get two tortoises, but you only need one in there for him to be happy. So because one of the objectives is to get your profit up, um, I've just decided to put the uh, minimum amount of animals in to try and keep the costs, feed costs and that down. So there's my um, wild water buffalo habitat. And the wild water buffalo is one of just a few where they don't give you sufficient animals for them to naturally be happy. So they give you one, but they need three to be happy. So I went into the market and bought two additional water buffalo and just watched the, uh, uh, whether they're male or female, um, what, or, what uh, composition of males and to females will make them happy. So that was the uh, education pinging there. And um, again, I've just been trying to, oh, and there is the profit as well. So the profit is actually not that difficult to get because I haven't really tried very hard to put in a lot of shops, gift shops, that sort of thing. Now, um, this uh, transport was actually way too close to the path, so I had to go back and correct it, um, as you'll see later. But um, the, yeah, the profit, um, I didn't really have to worry about too much. I just put in a few uh, drinks and food drops, and that was sort of more what the guests were wanting anyway. So um, here's me setting up another sta little staff area. Um, for the keepers to service these habitats. So this habitat on the right here, um, that's actually a shared one. Um, it's got the um, tapir and I saw that they happily share with the capybara. Um, so after the water buffalo, it's tapir and capybara. So they can go in an enclosure together to save you uh, some space, time and money. 
Just adding some education boards to keep that education rating up. Um, I actually found that I probably did spend a little bit too much time finessing the zoo. I probably could have done this time scenario a bit faster, but <laughs> I made the mistake of looking at the guest happiness in <laughs> and seeing what to improve rather than the actual zoo rating. Um, yeah. So that's why I'm spending a lot of time on like putting in talks and making sure the, the work zones are all set. I mean, you know, it's probably important to do that anyway, but um, not sure if I had focused on the uh, zoo rating a little bit more. I'm not sure if that would have been necessary. So here's another work area so that's supposed to um yep be for the water buffalo and the otters just to keep the work burden on the keepers down a little bit so capybara is another animal where you get one and they need a few more they need three more to be happy so i think they need four per enclosure um the red cranes were the only other animal um, that needed technically an additional animal to be happy, but I don't think I ended up putting one in. So now I'm just increasing the uh, happiness of the animals a little bit to uh, make sure they're uh, getting that 85% welfare. So I noticed that the uh, water treatment didn't quite reach this little puddle here. So <laughs> rather than fiddling around with the water treatment, I decided to just make the habitat a little bit uh, smaller because uh, it was it was really big anyway. So they could uh, I could sacrifice a little bit of space there. And then the last animal is the Nile lechwe. Uh, I tried to look up how to pronounce that and uh, didn't get a straight answer from Google. Um, so we'll go with Lechwe. It could be Lechwe. Who knows? <laughs> I noticed a lot of the animals um, that are in this zoo don't have a very high appeal rating. Um, I suppose, I don't know, it just seems like, I don't know how Frontier works these appeal ratings out. There's probably some reason, like, do they, do they poll people? Do they get statistics from real zoos? I'm not sure, but it uh, seems to be the larger or, you know, like meat eater type animals that uh, have the highest appeal. Um, these smaller animals and herbivores don't really seem to have a high appeal, which, uh, you know, will affect your guest numbers. But seeing as the guest number requirement is quite low anyway, uh, only 1,200, um, you know, I think they've kept that in mind when designing this time scenario. I actually did find this time scenario was actually not that difficult. Um, I've seen some people online complaining about, you know, they don't do time scenarios because they're too stressful, but I can relate when I first started doing them oh it was like I was having a heart attack like I'd spend the whole hour being completely stressed <laughs> or however long it took only to get like just fly past gold and silver and end up having to get bronze on everything but um after a while it's I just kind of got used to it and um yeah I don't find it stressful anymore um but anyway if you if you haven't really done any time scenarios this is one of the easier ones to do um, so that's the um, habitat welfare increase there, I believe. Then I was just trying to um, create a viewpoint for the lechwe. <laughs> um, I, I don't know if it actually worked. I don't. I didn't really come back to it, but. Um, And uh, here's the um, guest numbers pinging. So you can really see that uh, we needed a lot of those low appeal animals in the zoo to generate some crowds. 
Um, I was doing a little bit of research there because uh, the turtles tend to get a little bit uh, shy sometimes so I was gonna do one-way glass on the viewpoint but I didn't need to do that after all so I spent the last eight minutes of the run um, just trying to increase the guest happiness which was again that mistake I made where I should have been looking at the <laughs> zoo star rating but then again the um, education and the guest happiness uh, contributes towards your overall zoo rating anyway so it wasn't necessarily a uh, waste of time so I built this little platform up here just so that the uh, education talk could include the throwing of food which I'm not sure how important <laughs> is to that is to the actual uh, success of the educator talk. Um, it looks kind of cool when they like lob a hunk of meat into the lion enclosure, but in terms of whether that uh, is anything but simple aesthetics, uh, I'm not sure. I was pretty excited to see uh, the platypus introduced to the game. Uh, particularly as an Australian, to see another one of our native animals included there. But it wasn't part of this time scenario, so I guess I'll just have to um, enjoy it on one of the other maps. It's actually an animal I haven't seen in the wild. Um, here, I've seen echidnas, koalas, kangaroos, not platypus. So here's when I cottoned on to the uh, zoo rating and um, it was pretty quick from there to uh, get that last uh, objective. Just put in some marketing because I had plenty of money. Um, so that's it. Uh, not too difficult this one and uh, hope you all can get your gold stars. <laughs>